Hi guys, I'm coming to you today with a little bit of scientific fact around your left and right brain hemisphere. Now, inside your brain, you literally have two hemispheres, left and right, and you could independently live off either or of those hemispheres, meaning that if I had a stroke in my left hemisphere, my world would look a lot different, but I could still function as a human being with a complete right hemisphere, and vice versa. Your world would look a lot different if you damaged your right hemisphere and you lived out of your left. And that's exactly what I'm going to talk to you today about and why you need the both in pure harmony or balance. Because we don't specifically, unless there has been some sort of trauma or stroke in the brain, you want to have a beautiful balance between the left and the right so that you can have healthy brain function but also power in your life the best you possibly can. Now, I have made a lot of notes because this stuff, I'm no expert on neurology. Yes, I've studied functional neurology, but I'm not a neuroscientist. And especially the emotional side of things, I've taken a lot of this information off a documentary that I recently watched that I was fascinated with, and I will link that for you in the video as well. So I'm going to go into the left and right brain hemisphere and what they are all about, okay? So let's start with the left brain hemisphere, and most of the time I will be reading this because there's a lot of information to cover and I don't want to miss anything. So the left brain has a narrow, focused attention to detail. What I can explain to you what that means is if I'm in a jungle and I see a beetle on a leaf, all I'm going to focus on is that beetle, and I'm going to be like, wow, look at that. That's the only thing that I want to see and know about. Yet there's probably two tigers behind me about to kill me, but I won't know that because my focused attention is on those beetles. It has no sense of the whole situation, just like I said. What other factors may be involved in what's going on? The two tigers are behind me. There may be a snake over there. It may be about to rain. I won't know that in my left brain hemisphere. I just see a beetle. It sees what it wants to see and nothing else matters. For example, people are seen as body parts in your left brain hemisphere. There is a nose, there is an eye, there is an ear. It can't figure out if that is a person. It just says nose, eyes, ear. Nothing else. All right. It needs its right-hand man, the right hemisphere, to say, yeah, but look, it's a nose, it's an eye, and it's a mouth. That must be a human being. So they're kind of like best, best buddies. They work off each other's back. Yeah? The right brain hemisphere can see the whole picture. That's why the right is very much needed in life, because we need to see what's going on all around. We need the whole picture. We can't make our decision on one tiny little thing. So a lefty can't make human connection. It doesn't understand humour, relationships, or tone of voice. People are not seen as unique and individual from a left brain. It rather tries to sort, file, and systemize into groups that can be organized and filed or ruled into single or linear connections. It tries to shatter the world into an assortment of bits without meaning. It just goes to sees lines, it sees things, it goes file, log, da -da -ding, da -da 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 ding, okay, like a conveyor belt, milk, eggs, honey, ding, that's the left brain. So now let's have a quick look at the right brain hemisphere. So you know the saying left, lefty, loosey, righty, tidy, well it's kind of the opposite with the brain. It's righty, loosey, you. <laughs> and lefty tidy because the left is just systematic in approach, the right kind of likes flow. The right brain hemisphere is the master of the brain. It sees the broad view of the world and it takes the scattered left images and puts them all together to form an idea, meaning, or a thing, life. It perceives an interconnected world. It understands relationships, body language, facial expression, and connected meaning to a situation. The right hemisphere engages with life. It understands movement, story, flow, intuition. The more right-brained you are, the more you can read someone's energy, uh, their tone of voice, their body language, their facial expressions.
See, you just read me right then. You read my body tone, my facial expressions, my energy, okay? Just like you're probably reading now. <laughs> Knowing this to me is fascinating because the left and right side of the brain gives us two ways to engage with the world. Now I want to explain what living in a left-sided brain world would look like. And I want you to decide why the powers of the world whoever they may be, would want someone to be more left hemisphere than right hemisphere. And I'll let you make that decision yourself. You might enjoy it being in the left hemisphere more than the right hemisphere. It's up to you. It's a personal preference. So being in the left hemisphere world would be like living amongst many structured lines, machines, cities, those tall high rises and linear constraints. The left hemisphere is geared towards more regulation, more bound, more systemed, more money, more power, more lockdowns. Think of a hamster on a wheel. Okay, think of when you go into a city and you see tall, big buildings and streets between the buildings. It's very structured. It's very linear. More standardization and more uniformity. That's what the left brain loves. Desks, cubicles, Aldi corridors, Wall Street, trains, busy, bustling. The left brain hemisphere loves all of this. Why? Because the left brain hemisphere needs control. It needs things to be black or white, this or that, up or down. It needs the facts and it needs to take action on what it sees and the decision right before it. Remember, it can't see the whole. It just focuses on what is in front of it one step at a time. The left hemisphere has a massive denial capacity to ignore things and keep things shut out if it's not useful. The right brain hemisphere, it wants connection, okay? It flows. It understands that everything needs to work together and flow together. It knows that a barbecue chicken, for example, that was bought at the shop was once a live chicken running around on the grass, flourishing, and now it is not. It understands the whole picture, whereas the left brain hemisphere just sees the barbecue chicken and relates that to food. I hope that's a good example, if you like barbecue chicken or if you like chickens. Anyway, the right brain asks questions as it can see the whole picture. Will that medicine make me sick or can that medicine make me sick? What are the side effects? What else could I do as well as taking the medicine to make the medicine work better or to make me function better? It asks lots of different things. It sees lots of different things. The left just sees medication. Someone said to take it, and it says, give it to me. It must be good. I'll take it. That's what the left brain hemisphere does. It doesn't want to see the wider picture, nor can it. The right hemisphere needs flow, space, nature, nurture, connection, growth, dance, movement, openness, expansiveness, art, humor, expression, creativity. Think of the hunter-gatherer. They don't see city lines. All they see is colour. They see different shapes of trees. They see different landscapes in front of their eyes, which means their brains are more calibrated accurately or more accurately in a balanced way. See, understanding that we are a part of nature is actually hidden this day and age. Coming back to that barbecue chicken, the left side brain kicks in because it just sees the barbecue chicken in the aisles of the shop and you pick up the barbecue chicken and you put it in your cart and you go home and you eat it. It ignores completely or it kind of doesn't even think about that it was once a flourishing chicken. It has no need to. It has no need to uh, correlate that it was a part of the whole picture, that that chicken actually needed to be born. It needed a mother and a father. It then needed to grow and flourish. It needed soil and sun and water. See, we don't think of that every time we grab a barbecue chicken we just go chicken food unfortunately we are being encouraged to have more of a left lifestyle now let's see why that is we have more claims on our attention we live in cities we are distracted more iPhones, social media news work the way we are educated is very left hemisphere cubicles desks indoors uh, this way that way Theories, shh, don't talk, yes, no's, A, B, C's, fail. It's very structured. Success is a job 
and success is a job and money. That's how we are taught in school. That's how we are taught to grow up. You go to school, you get a job, you make money, you provide. Success is not seen as barefoot in the bush. Success is not seen as in a rowboat going down a beautiful stream and lake and enjoying nature and butterflies buzzing around you. That is not what success is this day and age. So that's success in my head, but we won't go there. <laughs> Think of our first couple of years. This is interesting because as a kid, the first couple of years are actually very geared towards a right-sided brain. When you are young, you are encouraged to play. You're encouraged to draw. You're encouraged to sing and do rhymes and rhythms and be active and move and paint and play music and be open and expressive. And then that stops the day you enter school. Shh, stop that. Stop talking, as I said before. So then we geared, we have a shift, and it's important to learn all that right stuff first, but then there is a big shift towards the left. Now, the one thing the right hemisphere needs more than anything else is depth depth of expression, depth of emotion, depth of space and time, and depth of self and life. So what is scary to me is of recent times, more than anything, how much more we are being lefted, okay, in our left hemisphere, if we're not already there by just living in cities and whatnot. And I want to give you an example. Now, this is just, this is science. This is, um, it's not coming from me, it's just an example I want you to understand. And yes, my opinion is very much more geared towards the right side of the brain, but I want you to sort of understand where I'm coming from here. And I'm going to talk about masks, masks over the face. So do you remember me saying the right brain recognises the whole picture? It says to the left brain, that's a face because there's an eye and there's a nose and there's an ear and there's a mouth, that's a human, that's a face, yes? It then also needs facial expression, tone of voice and body language to be healthy, to flourish in the right side of the brain. So it puts all that together and then it looks at the face and it asks the face a question, say you're at the shop and the attendant says, um, do you have flybys? And you, and then she stops her mouth and you look at her mouth and you see it stop and you know that's your cue to say yes or no. Yes, I have flybys. No, sorry, I don't. And then she goes, no worries. That's all facial expressions. That's ingrained into our lives. So when a mask is placed on a face, the facial expressions and the whole picture is taken away or obscured. Okay, now the right brain is confused a little and the left brain takes over. Remember, it doesn't recognize individuals, the left brain. It's the individuals or the uniqueness of the individuals. It can't make human connection. So it doesn't see a human anymore when there's a mask on there. It just sees eye, eye, nose, and the right brain's going, oh, yeah, but I don't see a mouth either. Um, uh, and there's a bit of confusion, right? The left side of the brain goes, hey, 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 right side of the brain, I'll take over here. You don't know what you're talking about. This is not a human being. There's no need to engage with this human being. There's structure here. There's just what I see and that's what I see. Why? Because it has no expression. It's not a whole thing. Yes, our right brain is very smart and the right brain's going to go, yeah, but that's just a person wearing a mask. But that's in a person that has a really healthy, balanced left and right brain. But if you're more geared towards one or the other, you're going to have a different perspective of someone wearing a mask than someone else. But you can see how something like a mask can diminish the right side of the brain and gear more to the left side of the brain. So what does this all mean? It means this world at present doesn't want you to prosper in your right side of your brain which is unfortunate because it is the master brain, like I said before. It is easier to manipulate, constrain, and conform and rule over a left brainer than it is a right brainer or a balanced brainer. If we can get better at balancing the two sides of our hemispheres through equal amounts of attention, we don't just want the left to overpower. We don't just want the right to overpower. We want a beautiful balance between the two because they can't live without each other. If you're really right, you know, 
um, hemisphere geared, meaning you love art and you love nature and you love being free spirited and you are just, that's all you do, you're never going to get anything done, right? You're never going to be able to sit down and actually pump something out, pump some work out because you're too far over here. And if you're too far over here in the left, you have absolute no empathy or no connection to the whole of the world or to humans in general. Okay, that's why we need the two to come together. Because if you want to have art and expression and love and humor, but be able to sit down and pump out your work so that on the weekend you can get more love, expression and art and humor, then that is a perfect balance. So work, play, nature and indoors, shoes and no shoes, stillness and movement, dance and focused attention, rules and freedom to choose. We will be a powerful force in all dimensions, especially equality, togetherness, love, compassion, nature, nurture, flow, and connection, if we work on our two sides of our hemisphere equally. And none of this is woo-ha, because it's literally scientific fact that your left and your right are different, have different ways of thinking. So I want you to ask yourself, what side are you more geared towards? What's your life look like? Are you more... Uh, pushed into the left? Do you have a nice balance of the right? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that I think all humans need more right side attention. Okay, We all need to get out more. We all need to get off our phones more. We all need to get out of the cities and be in nature and have space around our bodies instead of be inside all of the time. Focused attention is amazing, but play is even more amazing. And I do hope you sort of take this into consideration as to why we are being pushed into a left society more, okay, why they don't want us to go out, why they do want us to be locked in, why, you know, we have to wear something that changes a facial expression and take away everything else behind the scenes. Remember, it's a whole. And if you can't see a whole, then perhaps you are more left geared. Okay, you need to get more right geared. And the balance is where the sweet spot is. So less work, more play, more work, less play, whatever it is that you need. I hope you enjoyed this little left and right brain hemisphere. I found it fascinating. If you want to learn a little bit more about the left and right brain and, and the emotions attached to them, I suggest that you go to The Divided Brain. And also Dr. Ian McGilchrist has a book about this sort of stuff that is emotions attached to each side of our brain and how it can influence the way we move through life, having a left geared brain or a right geared brain. Um, I know it's fascinating to me because I work with the left and right brain hemisphere. Someone could have a right brainstem issue, which means I'm going to have to work on their left side of the body to push more information into the right side. That's physically. But I can also give that person some advice on lifestyle now. Get out into nature more. Let's get you more right hand geared to fix this right side of your brain a little bit more and vice versa fascinating the brain is fascinating so i hope you enjoyed that and maybe take a little bit of time to ask yourself those questions of which side do you want to live more on left or right <laughs>